Okay, now you have obtained your HIV letter, we're going to run down how to read it and what are the key things to take note of in a HIV letter. So the first thing that you're going to see is that you're going to see that the prelim check has been completed, the HIV letter application has been completed, and you're going to see this big word approved, and you're also going to see when it is valid until. The HIV letter used to be valid for 6 months, but now it has increased to 9 months, which is great because if you let your HIV letter expire, you will have to redo the process all over again. So now you have a bit more time. The next thing to take note is that you have to double check your applicant name, NRRC, your secondary applicant name and NRRC to ensure that it is all accurate and correct, and of course, you have to remember to save your HFE reference number and my doc reference number because you will definitely need it later on in the process of purchasing a HDB. The second thing to take note is the eligibility, what you can buy. If you're buying a new BTO, you click on this tab and it will show you the options that is available to you. If you're buying a resale, then you can click on the resale tab and see the options that are available to you. Next, it is the eligibility for your CPF housing grants. Based on your application and the information you submitted, you will be or will not be entitled to a certain number of grants and the amount will be reflected here. If you are buying a new BTO, you can toggle to this tab and it will show you the total amount of grants that you are entitled to. If you are buying a resale, you can also toggle to this tab and see the different types of grants that you are entitled to and how much they are. So for new versus resale, for resale there are more types of grants that is available to you. So make sure you check each and every one to understand your eligibility for the different types of grants, especially for a resale flat. Last but not least, we reach the section of the HDB housing loan. What happens here is that they will tell you if you are eligible for HDB housing loan or you are not. If you are eligible, there will be three options for you to choose from, prudent, moderate or maximum. For me, I always advise my friends and my clients to go for maximum all the time because if you go for the maximum loan, for an HDB loan, you are able to do early repayments at no penalty. A lot of bank loans have early repayment penalties. That means if you go for the maximum, you can always repay earlier to save on the interest if you want to. But if you choose prudent or moderate and later on in your journey, you want to increase your loan amount, you will not be able to do so anymore. So just go for the maximum, especially if you're eligible for a HDB loan. And in section you will also see the payment mode. Most importantly, make sure you screen through the entire document and check that your details, the grant amount and everything tallies to what you are supposed to be given because HDB is processing so many HFE letters at once, sometimes they do make certain mistakes which you will need to inform them about. Most of the time, it is quite accurate and they don't really make mistakes but double check this and if you have any questions, don't call me. Call your trusted consultant because it's always easier and better to work with someone that you trust, a friend or a family member. But if you have no one to call, you can always drop me a WhatsApp message and I will do my best to help you on a one-on-one -on -one consultation. Thank you and peace!